Yes, 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 yes. Welcome, welcome to this episode of Nuff Props. I appreciate you watching today. And before we get started, do me a favor and hit that like button. Please, please hit that like button. You don't need an account to do it, but if you do have an account, please subscribe. I plan on giving you information that is fun and compelling, and I hope you learned something today that you didn't know yesterday in a fun way that uh, is easy. But anyways, today we are talking about XTC 3D. This product actually is a epoxy resin designed for 3D prints. So why would a 3D print need a product like this? Don't they come out perfect when, they, when they're printed? As advanced as 3D printing is today, they don't come out perfectly smooth. They actually require a lot of sanding after they're done. Let me explain. 3D prints are done in layers. And as a nozzle prints out the object, it builds up these layers until the final product is complete. These layers create lines on the sides, on the surface of the uh, 3D print. And those need to be sanded down. And sanding is a process I, I, I don't really enjoy. You have to do it. it sucks. But, but if you want a nice smooth surface, uh, this, this process is, is crucial. So XCC 3D makes that so much more easier. And it's not just good for 3D prints. You can use it with uh, cardboard, styrofoam, EVA foam, just to name a few. But those are the products that I've worked with so far. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the things you need to use XCC 3D. And I'm gonna see how many times I get tongue-tied saying XCC 3D. Today's video, I'm gonna show you the things you need to get started and how to apply XCC 3D to 3D prints. <laughs> and the product I'll be working on today is the free range chicken designed by the Craftsman. So without further ado, Let's get started. talk about some of the things we're going to need to get started. A Tupperware container or a plastic container, some popsicle sticks, plastic cups, measuring cups, aluminum foil, XTC 3D of course, a black pigment of your choosing, foam brushes, and an extra brush for those small little details. All right, for mixing, you can use these small measuring cups. They're pretty good. Or you can go to the dollar store and use these clear transparent shot glasses because they work good as well. Sometimes I draw a line on these cups to make it easier to see my measurements. It works for me, it's up to you. When using XTC 3D, when using XTC 3D, Make sure you follow the instructions. I'm just trying to simplify things for you guys. When using XTC, you know what? From now on, we're just gonna call this XTC. You guys get the idea. XTC is mixed in two parts, part A and part B, and it's done in volume. So whatever you put in cup A, that measurement has to be cut in half, and that's what you'll use for part B. Okay, uh, it's a two to one ratio. Don't wanna make it too confusing. It simply means that uh, you need two parts of this and one part of this. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to add some color 
to part A. And I use Smooth On's So Strong Tint. It's pretty messy because it, it's, it's pretty potent pigment. Um, so I use this because you only need a little bit and it goes a long way. That's why it's called So Strong. Okay, next we're gonna apply XTC, but we're gonna do it Craftman style. Okay, so we gonna mix this all up right now. Mix it all up until it's nice, solid, and black. Then we're ready for part B. We can pour it all up in there, just like that. Make sure we get it all in there. Scrape the sides and things, and just make sure we get it. All of it. We won't scrape it all in there. Now we just mix it up. Mix it, mix it real good and mix it, mix it for about a minute. Wait a second, this uh, camera is messing with me. Let me uh, see if I can fix it. All right, we're about ready to go now. So we mix it for a minute. That looks good. So we will pour it all in here, just like that. All over in this container. Craftsman, why are you putting that in a flat container like that? Well, when you pour it into a flat container instead of a cup, you get more working time, about five more to 10 more minutes. So we wanna make sure we get as much working time as possible with this here. And we wanna make sure we get it all out, scraping the sides and things. Just like that. All right. Okay. So we got about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm gonna start working on this thing here. The stick gonna help me hold it. Oh. No, it's not. So we're just going to forget about that. This stuff all over this here project. And we want to make sure we're going to get it all over there, all up in the crevices and creases of this here thing. I like using the foam brush because it doesn't leave much streaks on the project. We don't want much streaks on there. We want it to be as smooth as possible. We'll get it on here and on. Just like that. And on the other side too, make sure we don't get it in that hole because we don't want it to get all sticky and clogged up. All right, not looking good so far. What y'all think? Well, we better get started. As you can see, it's getting all sticky and mushy and stuff. So we better get started on this rocket pack. Let's get on there, just put it on all over here. Don't want to put too much. What y'all think? That look good? All right, so that's it for now. We're just gonna put this here right down here. And we'll be back in about uh, two hours. And now this here, is what it looks like when it's cured. It's all, all thick and, and nasty and no good. We can still work with it, but we won't have any more projects to put it on. Craftman's unique way of sharing information is so good. Check out his channel. Okay, there we have it. It is done. After one coat, it's looking pretty good. Normally, I put two coats onto this, but I'm liking the way it turned out. Actually, let me take my gloves off because you can't really see. Okay, so even though you can see some of the lines, I'm okay with that. I feel like I'm confident that I can get rid of a lot of these uh, bumps. I am happy though that a lot of the areas that I, were, I was concerned about would be flooded, weren't flooded like this mouth area here, the eyes, they weren't too bad. And uh, some of the grooves in the fingertips, I can still see. So I was worried about the coating overlapping and covering those details, but it did flood and pool down here on this lip, um, but that shouldn't be too hard to work with. I can work with this. As for the rocket pack, one coat was perfect. This is the kind of smooth texture you want to see. 
you want to see this. None of the lines that I see on the back here. Like I, like I said, I can work with this, but this is what you want. And I'm happy. Hello. <laughs> okay, so that's it today. The free range chicken is done with one coat of XTC 3D. I really like how that came out. Um, next time we'll be talking about sanding and all the different grips of sandpaper that you can use and the different tools to help sand something as intricate and detailed as this. I also have some other projects that I've been putting off that I definitely will get standard as well in that segment. So join us for that. And if I didn't mention it before, I hate sanding. So this should be fun. Again, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next video. All right. Till then, have fun and keep practicing. Keep practicing? Man, hope we get to, uh, to a point where her, my words come out a lot more smoother and I don't have to do as many takes. But until next time, keep crafting and have fun. Bless up. Peace.